people say, how do you Jefferson County Democrats manage to do this? And I tell them, here's what we do. We do two things. First of all, we make the case. We don't just sit there and assume that because people have not voted for us or people like us that they will not vote for us in the future. We go out and we make a case to people. What did you all do in November 2008 and October 2008? You went to your churches and synagogues and your neighborhoods and you said, what we have is not working. What we have is dividing the country. What we have is polarizing us. There's a very smart, thoughtful guy running for president who has some ideas to fix it. And you may turn on the internet and hear some things about him that aren't true. You may venture your way onto the Fox News channel or onto cable TV and hear some things about him that aren't true. But you know what? We know. We know. We know what's happened to this country, and we know how we need to fix it. You've made the case. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, if I can begin with that observation, as we look at the 2010 election cycle, which, as I will tell you in a moment, is going to be so important, as we look at the 2010 election cycle, it is about whether the people in this room can teach a lesson to Democrats around the state and teach us how to make a case, how to tell the truth about what we believe and our values. How did we start today? You repeated your tradition of listing casualty numbers or the numbers of dead for our soldiers fighting two wars overseas. You do that at every one of your meetings at the beginning. It is your way of giving honor to people who love their country and who act on that love for their country. What we do after that? We set the pledge. We affirm, as Americans do all over this country, our belief in the goodness and the essentialness of the values of this country. When we do that, we're sending a signal to people that you can be a Democrat and love your country and have your faith and care about the essentialness of this country. You're doing that. You do it in other ways. You are making a case, ladies and gentlemen, about who we are as Democrats. And frankly, we Alabama Democrats do fine when we make our case. When we fail to make our case, when we let our opposition define us, when we let our opposition act as if the way we used to be is a determinant of what we will be, we lose elections. So I want to invite all of you. I'm going to talk more about the governor's race in a moment. But I want to invite all of you to keep on investing in and keep on believing in this party. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we're 102 days into a new administration. And because of people like us all around this country, we have a new president. And I don't know about you, but when I picked up my newspaper this morning and turned on my computer last night and saw that David Souter was leaving the bench, I was so glad that the person replacing him has the values of Barack Obama. I was glad to see that. I'm glad to see as we chart our way out of the deepest economic recession since the 1950s. We lost six points, we lost six points in the last quarter, 7.3 points in the quarter before that. Biggest two month contraction since 1957. I'm so glad that Barack Obama, frankly, is the person charting his way through those difficult decisions. So we don't have to be on the run anymore. We don't have to say, we're Democrats. <laughs> we don't have to hide our life behind the bushel. And in case you wonder if it's working, may I favor you with just a few statistics that may surprise you. The best pollster in the state of Alabama who doesn't work for me is Gerald Johnson with AEA. <laughs> what he determined about President Obama's popularity two weeks ago? A guy who got somewhere between 10 and 16 percent of the white vote and 39 percent of the vote overall 
Today, Barack Obama has a 53% approval rating in the state of Alabama. And since approval rating is the greatest predictor of whether people will vote for an incumbent, if we could get a do-over next week, Barack Obama would carry the state of Alabama, ladies and gentlemen. That's movement and that's progress. We didn't have to wait a generation for the world to come around to us. He's done a good enough job and is putting plans in place that are growing our economy and will grow our economy. He has done enough of the right things. And when he went abroad, we saw an American president speaking for American values. For the first time in eight years, we saw the world rallying around our values. That is why his numbers are moving up in Alabama. He's making the case. So keep on believing.